Um, so today, what I'm going to talk about now is um, how we at Icon um, basically use crowdsourcing and open innovation mechanisms to uh, tap into our employees and to our employees' knowledge. Um, and um, so that's what we're going to talk about next next uh, 20 minutes. First of all, though, probably there's not a lot of people in Ireland know who we actually are. Um, we're a pretty big company um, in, in Ireland and globally. We're the third or fourth largest clinical research organization in the world with roughly 13,000 employees worldwide, uh, two offices here in Ireland, in uh, Dublin and in Limerick. Um, I actually work, I would say I am from Tipperary. People don't believe that with my last name, and that's actually true. I live in Tipperary. My wife is from Tipperary. I guess there's a slight distinction there. Um, so I have a team of 12 people uh, in ICON uh, that look into innovation. Um, and we're trying to figure out how we do, how can we do clinical research better? How can we improve clinical research and how can we access more patients and bring the benefits of clinical research to patients? We have, as you can see here, we have uh, been involved and are involved in uh, quite a few uh, big projects uh, that are globally recognized. We do a lot of work with IBM Watson on the artificial intelligence side of things. Um, we work with the EHR4CR, that's a European uh, initiative, on how can we tap into patient records uh, to find patients that are eligible for certain clinical trials. We're the data management partner for the Genomics England projects, the biggest genomics projects uh, worldwide. Um, and probably interesting in the context of the previous presentation, we are a, mem we are a partner of the ITROM initiative, which basically um, try something similar on a global basis. So we have set standards for patients to tell us uh, how they did after an intervention, surgery, chemotherapy, whatever it is. So we're not asking them how did they feel being at the hospital, but we feel how did the intervention uh, help you and how do you feel three months, six months, 12 months after you were treated at a, at a specific hospital. Um, the project manager from ICON of this project sits right there. So if you have any questions around that one, um, she is there. Uh, she just arrived. Um, and we offer all kinds of services around clinical trials. Uh, that's basically our core business. So I joined ICON five years ago. And three and a half years ago, I've been asked to set up an innovation function. Um, at that time, I had no idea what they wanted me to do, and I think my bosses didn't know that either. So um, we started to do what we always do. We started to research. Google knows everything. So we tried to figure out what is it that we can do and how should we do it and how we go about it best. Um, my lucky fortune was that my wife has got nine siblings, and one of them is a lecturer at the University in Galway, and she did her PhD in open innovation. So at some small family event with about 40 uh, guests. Um, we talked about my new role and she said, well, there are software packages that can help you with that. I had no idea what she was talking about. So we then found out that there's a crowdsourcing software as a service offering from a host of different companies that allow you to basically be more organized around how to manage challenges, ideas, and uh, um, input from a group of people. So, so we figured out we had to build an innovation ecosystem. And the reason why we did that is because ICON had done um, what they called a hackathon uh, three and a half years ago, and 63 submissions from employees uh, in, globally in ICON um, needed to be sifted through. And that fell then into my lab, um, and it became very clear very quickly that I didn't have the resources nor the experience to actually do that properly, which led to a lot of confusion and some frustration on the side of people who actually put effort into submitting these ideas. So we came to a company called uh, Imaginetic after we've done some uh, vendor selection process and we figured out that uh, at the core is the idea journey and the idea management and this is what that platform does. So. We basically set that up, we, we made it our own, and we ran the first couple of challenges without, again, really knowing what we were doing. That was sort of where we felt like um, 
entrepreneurs. We, we, we just went ahead and did it. We had some funding. We had a couple of people that sort of kind of knew what we were doing or were supposed to be doing. And we started the first challenges. Challenges are basically somebody in Icon has a problem or a challenge. You put that on the platform and 12,000 or 13,000 people have access to that and can contribute. Um, and it's all uh, in one database, basically. So this, uh, this is how we started um, this about three and a half, three years ago, or two and a half years ago, actually, because it took us about a year to set up the platform. So, but then we had to think about it, and that was coming out of the presentations before the submissions. Once we have these ideas and we vet them and we find they're good ideas, how do we secure funding? Because there's nothing worse for, an, in, uh, you know, say, a team within a company that comes up with a good idea, it's vetted, it's accepted, and we all think it's, it's, we should be doing this, and then you can't get the funding to do it or not do it quickly. So we had to come up with a process at the back end of innovation, back end of innovation to actually make sure we get the funding to, to do the work that we wanted to do. And that uh, took a little while. We had, uh, we had to set up a couple of committees, too, within ICON that basically had the funding authority to fund some of these things. Um, and that actually worked out in the end as well. I'll get into more details later on. So the input, the front of innovation, we started with the ICON employees, but you see we have customers, partners, markets, and competitors. There's other inputs, and we'll, we'll get to that later because we put in more uh, even than, than these ones. Um, some of the ideas disappear. Um, it's, it's, that's why you call it a journey. Uh, I always say, if you have an idea, you put it in the system, it comes back as minced meat. Don't take that personal, but it probably wasn't a good idea. Uh, there's you know, 12,000 people that are um, basically going through that and, for, and, and basically submitting other ideas or trying to evolve your ideas to the next stage. Um, so our continuous focus was there on prioritization, as I said before, to make sure that whatever ideas come out of that and need funding, that this is still in sync with what we as ICON want to achieve and what, uh, what problems we need to address. So about a year into the concept, we have um, an, another colleague of ours that is strong on, on behavior and culture. So he did some research and went, went to some of these seminars. And what we find is that, um, and there's a topic here somewhere, is innovation should it be a function or an attitude or something. So we, we find that while we're the innovation team with an icon, there's only 12 of us and 12,000 no more and are better than 12 of us. So we had to find a way to bring innovation to everybody's desks on a daily basis. Um, so once we had that all set up, how do you control that? How do you control 13,000 people? I always say we can't and we shouldn't. We're just here to help them. But the way we go about it is we have, first we find a sponsor. So somebody senior in the organization that, that has an issue is willing to support this initiative. We find a business lead that actually uh, sort of director level most of the time works with my team to put the challenge up. Every challenge has a story built around that. You can't just put something in there. I have a problem with X, Y, Z. Can anybody help me? You have to position the problem. You have to tell a story uh, to get to people and, and get them engaged. So then we find subject matter experts of that specific area under question. Um, we find more subject matter experts, they uh, work as reviewers to review at the end all these uh, challenges, all the ideas. And then we have a product owner in the end who basically then has to make sure he gets the funding and runs the project and, and develops the tool or system or whatever it is. What we find uh, in the literature, it says you should run these challenges for two weeks. So you put it up there, leave it up for two weeks, and after that the participation drops off. Some of and I don't know whether we're just different or we're just looking at it in a different way, but we find that two weeks is not enough. So we quite often do it four weeks, sometimes even six weeks, and we keep sending reminders. So reminders from bottom up and top down, from the managers, um, but also from the subject matter experts to make sure that there's still um, a continued um, exercise and continued participation. So first, as I said, we frame the problem. So we have to tell a story. What, what is it in the context of what you want to do? Then you have to decide on the audience. I'm always a big fan of including 13,000 employees. Um, again, coming back to my sister-in-law, she's done some research now and says you have to pick the right crowd. 
So we have a lot of family events, so I get to pick her brain regularly, so which, which is a good thing. So now, first we said we take everyone. Now there seems to be the idea you need to pick your crowd because not everyone can contribute or wants to contribute. Um, then you have to execute the challenge, so I guess four weeks roughly. Um, you have to engage and capture, which means you have to engage the crowd, have to make sure people do engage and, and submit. And then you have to implement and measure what you did. So here are just some numbers that we had to look into and, and work towards. So why this is also a good thing, because I had to defend this expense to my senior management to get funding for that. And we're now in year four, and so far we're, we're good. We get funding again, so knock, knock on wood. Um, it's all going well. So 40% um, is what employees put in extra if companies recognize them. So we also had to link this system and the contributions that people make and the colleagues make in this system into our um, basically recognition uh, system. So with recognition, you can get, um, I would say, brownie points, but you can get points, and then if you have enough, you actually can, uh, can buy some. There's a shop behind that as well. So we had to link these two things, the contributions that they make and uh, the recognition that they get. Um, we also measure every year employee engagement, and 50% of companies' improvement can come just by having a system like that. So when we started that, there was a huge pent-up demand within our workforce to contribute. And the first couple of challenges that we rolled out there, we had hundreds of contributions that tapered down a little bit, but still very strong. I'll show you the numbers in a second. Um, so then 67% of employees say recognition, extremely effective motivator. Um, no surprise there. Um, and again, 100% say thank, thank you. Saying thank you doesn't cost anyone and um, actually does the trick. Um, and we do that on a regular basis. So then we had to target the... So behind the engine, there's, there's a lot of analytics. And you'll hear more about analytics today and other, other contributions here today in presentations. But what we can see is basically who is engaged, at what level in the organization are they, where are they, are there specific teams, are there hotspots. So we can organize all of that and analyze all of that and can basically use that to um, foster and to support these groups that are specifically or very productive and encourage others that are not as productive. So two years, two and a half years into the adventure. We've done 18 challenges. We do about one a month. Um, as you can see, almost 2,000 ideas have been submitted, uh, 4,500 comments, uh, 15,000 votes, and uh, views. But what I think is more important is when you look at the unique users, you can see that about half of ICON have um, participated. In Industry standard is about a third um, max. Some companies claim only a fourth. So 25% usually look at the stuff, and of the 25, only another 25% actually contribute. So the numbers are actually really low in the industry, but we have, um, we have beaten all the, all the metrics so far. And I think it's that we look at it as a, as a whole system, and we do a lot of encouragement, we do a lot of training with senior managers, vice presidents, in their individual divisions with an icon. Uh, we have think groups or think tanks within the divisions that support this. So there's a lot of effort goes into this to make these numbers happen. Well, what I'm also very happy with is that we have, um, again, 44 countries. We only have offices in 38, um, which means uh, we actually provided uh, leaflets into all these offices. But we even had reached beyond that, which I think is really good. Um, and then uh, we also produced a video uh, with a company here in Dublin to introduce a two and a half or three minute video to introduce everyone with an icon to the idea of what this is going to be and how it's going to work. Uh, the tool we call Spark and um, for this video that we did, we actually uh, won a couple of awards and we've got four more pending. So I hope that next week there'll be seven. I doubt it, but it could be one or two more. But so we, we spend a lot of time and effort into supporting this, this system. Um, yesterday I got, got a request. Uh, so what, this is all good and fine, but what, have you, what has that system done for us uh, as a company? So um, two examples um, where I think it actually worked really well. We have, we've had the request on our um, 
a business intelligence system, Iconic, to put a dashboard in for CRAs. CRAs are staff that travel a lot from doctor's office to doctor's office and make sure that they document everything for patients that are in a clinical trial. So they're on the road a lot and they have to prepare for every visit. They do about two visits a week. They have to prepare, they have to afterwards write a letter to the doctor, have to document what they found. So they're very, very busy. Um, before we started, a, uh, well, in the old days, which is probably about a year ago, they had 17 different reports that they had to check before they go to the doctor's office in 17 different systems. Sometimes it was even only an Excel sheet. So we had, we started in January last year, so 2016 January, we started to a challenge where all CRAs and, and people that work closely with CRAs, was three and a half thousand people were asked to give input in what a dashboard would have to include to make their job on the road a lot easier. So this is a big Oracle system that we have there. Um, and nothing happens quickly in the development of these systems, especially when, when there's a lot of business analytics involved. Um, in this case, we ran the challenge, as I said, about four weeks. We got the requirements out of the challenge, so what needs to be developed. We had designers working on the look and feel, and we had it rolled out all within six months. Most of the time before, it would take us six months just to gather requirements with focus groups. So we could actually cut the development by probably half, I would say, uh, in, in this uh, specific instance. Another thing is we were looking to replace one of our core systems. And um, so we had usual stuff. We had uh, three workshops with uh, subject matter experts, very senior guys from all over the globe, came to Dublin for three days. And they make up requirements. It was like a 50-page document. So we convinced the product owner to not only do that, but also put a challenge out there and ask for more requirements from everyone in Icon that will be using that system. So initially there was some pushback, we don't have time for that, it takes too long, uh, and w we know everything anyway because we have all these 50 pages of requirements. So at the end of the challenge, again, four weeks roughly, we found, and again, the, the guy, the product owner came back to me, uh, vice president level, and said, look, I'm actually glad I did that. We thought we had it all. There was an 80% overlap between what the focus group and the working group did and between what we found in, in the challenge. But there were 20% extra. And now these 20% were not nice to have. So they were not just some gimmicks that I thought would be nice to have in addition. They were crucial things that once the working group saw the additional 20%, yeah, we forgot about that. So uh, he's now one of our biggest um, advertisers in the organization to use this system. Um, so these are two things where you can show it really helps to engage the crowd in any organization, not just an icon. So what are we going to do next now that we have that all up and running and we won a couple of prizes? So now we have a new system uh, by the end of this month or middle of next month we call Ignite. Um, I guess you can see we like to play with fire. So. Um, Spark was internally focused. So tapping into our 13,000 employees. Ignite will do just a different thing. We are going out. So we're going to engage patients directly. We're going to engage doctors and sites directly. We're going to engage pharma companies directly. Um, and we're going to engage partners directly. Um, this is a new field. There's a lot of issues around IP, who owns what and where and when. So this is, we're going through that right now. But it offers a huge opportunity to get additional information. We all talk about clinical trials and patient health and healthcare needs to be more patient centric. That, that you see that word every, everywhere these days. And we think by, we have a, a product which we call uh, Patient Voice, uh, where we tap into patients, volunteers that come to us and talk to us about certain topics that we want to discuss. Some of this just developing a questionnaire or validating a questionnaire like we heard earlier in the presentation. But what it does, it opens up the, as I say, the room for, for open innovation. It opens up a new field that in our area, in clinical research, uh, nobody has gone for. We're the only large zero that actually has done any of this stuff. So we're, that's where I say we're innovative. Uh, we're using somebody else's ideas, but uh, roll it out into, into our space. 
um, and we expect uh, a lot from this. We have a lot of pharma companies that are very keen on getting involved in this. Uh, we have some patient advocate groups and patient focus groups that want to work with us on this. It's the first time in our industry that somebody actually really rolls out on a, on a bigger scale. And we don't know where the, where the trip is going to take us. It's, it's an adventure. How are we doing for time? I think I got 30 seconds here. So, <laughs> um, so we have the opportunity to have multiple collaborations. As I said, we can with Icon, we can with the partnerships, we can potentially just host the event and have others uh, use it, um, and something that we don't even know yet about. Um, partnership approach is what I think will be the, the most important one over the next year or year and a half, uh, basically where we have the same structure on our side as we have it on the, on the partner side, which is most likely pharma companies. Um, and this is where we're going to start. Um, so this is our model moving forward, um, where we have ICON on one side, and this uh, IDES is our innovation committee. I'm chairing that. And we have Ignite Innovation Committee, which will be a combination of internal and external um, sources. And this is, our, this is our use cases. Again, we start, as you can see, we started with Icon. Next thing will be patients. Then we go to investigators. And we expect, we expect a lot. Having said all of that, these, this, these systems are not very expensive. Um, so the most effort and the most money spent is on internal resources to roll that out and keep, keep the heat on, so to say, keep a constant flow of uh, ideas and challenges coming almost in time. <laughs>